hot take, your website doesn't even matter. Your culture, your branding, and your strategy is king. At this month's business plan, we're gonna be workshopping how to infuse your branding, your culture, and strategy into your website to begin generating that return on investment. So join us for this month's business plan. Why your website doesn't matter, very spicy topic, I know, um, but it's also why, because your, web, your website doesn't matter, but your branding, your strategy, and your culture is actually what's king, queen, superior when it comes to all of that. If you run out, and the, this is something that we have seen, uh, some of us, especially through training, maybe yep. have done a few times where you make a website, it's a, a nice thing, but it, it kind of exists as that. It's a thing. It doesn't really have an assigned purpose. What is it supposed to do? That's a good question. I'm still working on it. And that, therefore, it doesn't become helpful. And we have to think about a, a few certain industries. Uh, naturally, one that is good to refer to is our dear friend coffee. That in Pullman especially, there are tons of coffee places, tons of good coffee places that you go. I don't know that I have ever thought I'm going to explicitly go to the website to see, in that case, the function of the coffee shop is, I want coffee, I'm going to go get it, and then I'll figure it out on the way there. If there was a website that said we have coffee and that was its function, it's not particularly an enhancement per se because you already know that. If we consider a wheel, your website in a digital sense is kind of the spoke of the wheel. Everything else is an extension of it that all leads back to this to tell you what to do. And that's a form of maybe if it is coffee, do you have a service or something that I'm going to reserve? I want to make an order. I want more information. Are you hiring? Uh, whatever it is that fulfills a secondary function with the core thing still being, if the coffee place didn't make coffee, then what is the point? At Min's, we, we got to know Min very well. Min in particular was a guy who, he was not building focused. He was very, I am there to make food. He was hyper focused on food. That was his craft and that was the thing. And that was the thing that brought people in. It, it was fantastic. A lot of the criticism and critique that he got was about the state of his building or he didn't want to invest in it and infrastructure. And it was like, oh, but to him it was great, food's here. If you, you can take it out, you can sit in whatever you need to do, but that's what brought people in. We did end up making him a website, but again, the website did not really make or break the business. It was an enhancement to it, and that's it. Because he had been in business for 30 years before, before we one. even made the website for him, and people kept coming back for the food, even if they complained about the building, right? It's like, but the food's good, so I'm going to come back. Maybe I'll take it to go but I'm going to keep coming back for the food. One of the people we, we've gotten to know for branding that we look up to is a, a guy, his name is Marty Neumeyer, who's just this excellent guy who has studied and developed. He is like a master of branding. And when you ask that question, what is branding? There's a lot of things that come to mind. It's your logo, it's your colors, to a degree it's your name, it's your building. Uh, and he's like, all of that is nice. But really, more or less, branding is the impression that people get. It's the, that collective impression of uh, the classic example is if I walk into a Starbucks, I have an impression of what I'm going to get when I go to Starbucks. And every time I go into Starbucks, I expect that's going to happen. Sure, the cups are going to be the same. The service is probably going to be the same. And the coffee is going to be the same. But I'm familiar with that. So if anybody says Starbucks, I immediately know what they're talking about almost to the point where you can sense it. And uh, over the last two years, I have traveled a lot. Uh, I was in California recently, uh, and we went to a whole bunch of cities, and for whatever reason, everybody was like, oh, look at all these awesome places. We're gonna go to Starbucks in every single one. <laughs> it's like, I wanna try new coffee, but I guess I'll try California Starbucks. And I can confirm it is the exact same. But is it the logo that makes Starbucks? No. Is it the coffee cups that make Starbucks? No. But it's the collection of all of that. And, and as the brand strategist, right, your website could either look really great or it could look not as great. 
And a lot of that does come from branding. Some of the reasons why websites don't make sense when you go on them is because the branding's not consistent. And you wouldn't notice it unless you knew what to look for, but it's like, oh, why is this page blue and then this page purple? Why is this page like bright orange? And it has nothing to do with the colors, it's just something's not meshing and it's because the messaging, the branding is inconsistent. I mean, for example, when you go to, let's use a coffee shop because coffee, thank you, Thomas Hammer. Uh, <laughs> but when you go to the coffee shop, like Preston was saying, you know, I am gonna go there knowing I'm either gonna want a coffee, maybe a tea, but I know what I'm gonna go get. I'm not gonna go to the website to go find it unless it's new. But even then, me personally, as just a consumer of all things caffeine, I typically choose to go to their Google business listing. I don't go to their website because I don't think a coffee shop always needs a website. Or for example, Roos. I, I knew to go to their website to get the email to do the catering. But I only knew that because when I had called asking how they do those like catering bulk orders, they said, oh, well, if you go to our website, you can call or email this person. I'm like, perfect. I wouldn't think that I needed to go to your website because I can go in and place that order or get the email from you over the phone. And then again, make that order and then never have to go to your website for anything other than that extra information. But then when we look at culture, Every culture in the coffee shops here, like you can go to any of them downtown, it's gonna be different. You're gonna walk into Roost and have a very specific experience as opposed to when you walk into Pups and Cups or when you walk into Neal's. It's all gonna be different and that's because the culture's different. And that's not a good or bad thing, but it's if your culture is good, if your culture is strong and is memorable for a person, you're gonna get those returning customers. You're gonna get the people who choose to come back to you because not only was the product pretty good, but also you gave them an unforgettable experience, whether that was just being like, hey, you know, just a suggestion. I know you order like a vanilla latte all the time. I've been really enjoying this kind of drink. Would you want to try that today? Just going that extra mile as not only an employee, as a business owner, and even just as a barista, but going that extra mile sticks out. Even if the person doesn't take that suggested latte, right? It's like, oh, but they had an option. They know what they like from where they work and they're able to refer that. And so then that would encourage me to then go talk to my friend and say, hey, like I went to this coffee shop the other day and this girl recommended this drink and it was super good. Like, let's go tomorrow. And so then not only was the culture good enough for me to talk to someone about it, but now that word of mouth is gonna keep carrying over and over until eventually your coffee shop is flooded one day and you don't know why. And it's because a bunch of people really enjoyed the overall experience. And that's what your branding is. It's that final impression from when they walk through the door to when they leave, what was that experience? Was it great all the way through? Was it a little wonky? <laughs> was it, or was it in some ways just a really poor experience? And, and only you as an individual can define what that is because my experience special experience at a coffee shop may be different from Preston's. And so it is that lasting impression that you leave on a person where if you go back to California, are you gonna go back to the one Starbucks in the corner because they were super chill? Or are you gonna go to the other coffee shop down the street because you didn't get to go there, but because you saw great reviews? Did you need a website for that? Or did you just need good people leaving good reviews because your culture, your branding, and the way that you chose to organize and run your business was great and consistent. I want everyone to either write down or kind of describe in short form where you're at. What do you think the culture is of your location? What is the culture of maybe your department? Uh, and linearly, what does that mean? And what effect does that have on the forward-facing brand? There's a old meme that we, we kind of got inspired <laughs> from this is uh, what I do, what my mom thinks I do, what society thinks I do. And it's a little bit of that. It's like, what, what do we think those perceptions are? What do you think it is? If you were somebody walking in, what do you think is the impression they would get? You know, then ask, this is what I think. Is that what you get whenever you've interacted with me, with my business, or, or even when you like pull up our website even? Does your website reflect what you want your culture and your branding to be? I would say, but do take this time to kind of evaluate, and then if you have questions, we'll be walking around um, to assist, but yeah. yeah.
So thank you everybody for coming. I hope we were able to talk about culture, impressions, uh, work through some things, and I hope this was valuable about how to think outward about what is your brand, what people think about you, and then everything else that you have utilized as a tool and extension of that. Yeah, we'll see you guys in October. Thank have you guys so much. Thank you. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for watching this business blend. We love meeting together with everybody, and I would encourage you, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and drop them down below. We'd love also for you to join us in person, rub shoulders with your local community business owners. Click that bell, hit subscribe, and we'd love to have a conversation with you. See you later.